Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar, brought to you by TechStrong and Precisely. My name is Cody J. Brown. I'm the host of TechStrong Learning. We have a quick webinar ahead, but first, I have just a couple of housekeeping notes to cover. First, today's session is being recorded, so if you miss any of our session or you'd like to rewatch at a later point in time, the on-demand recording will be made available shortly after we conclude our live webinar today. If you look at the right side of your screen, you'll notice the chat tab, and this is where we want you to send in any thoughts or concerns you have about today's webinar. And you'll also, on the right side of your screen, find the Q&A tab. Um, I'm not sure how much time our speakers will have for live Q&A, but all of these questions that you do submit will get forwarded over to them, so they will address your questions after the fact. And finally, before we conclude, we will be giving away four $25 Amazon gift cards, so be sure to stick around. So our webinar topic today is getting mainframe and IBM iData to Snowflake. And joining me is Ashwin Ramachandran, Senior Director of Product Management at Precisely. Ashwin, thank you so much for being here with me. I'm going to let you take the floor. Thanks so much. So I'm excited today to talk to you about what Precisely is doing with Snowflake. But before I do that, let's step back a little bit and talk about why are organizations choosing um, a platform approach around this idea of a cloud data platform? Well, a couple reasons. There's been a lot of investment, obviously, in on-premise data warehousing infrastructure, which has been excellent in terms of helping organizations get some analytical insights into their business operations and optimize them to achieve competitive advantage. That said, there's a lot of challenges to doing these within an on-premise world. Number one, you have heavy upfront capital expenditure and you have to allocate space for your peak workloads when the truth of the matter is 90% of the times so you're not operating at peak capacity. Um, that can be very expensive from a management and overhead perspective. There's a lot of administration that needs to happen. And ultimately, that what that does is it impedes the business's ability to quickly and rapidly transform their business based off of data. Your insights can get delayed. In order to scale up, you need to make a heavy capital expenditure. And beyond that, it's very, very difficult to tune your warehouse into uh, tune your warehouse to the demands of your business. So the approach that leverages a cloud data platform is fantastic because now you can build scalable warehouses extremely quickly. No longer are you acquiring hardware, installing software, administering that software, managing it, ensuring that you have appropriate resources. Today, with the click of a button, you can spin up a warehouse in your cloud environment of choice. Um, it helps organizations support that on-prem to cloud shift, but all of this really results in two key takeaways. Number one, your analytics and the insights you gain from your data can be much faster than they were previously. Different lines of business can operate off the same data set without impacting each other. You're ultimately paying for what you're using and as a result, if 90% of the time you're operating at 10% capacity, your bill reflects that at the end of the day. So I'd like to share a story of a customer who actually went through this transformation with Precisely. Now, this customer had a uh, business mandate coming from the C level that determined that they need to connect their customer and shipment information residing across many different operational systems of record. These include systems like the mainframe, relational databases like SQL Server, but the key challenge was they needed to deliver that data into an environment that would allow them to get that view into their data uh, in real time. And so marrying a lot of this disparate legacy data together, but doing it to meet real-time demand was a key challenge that they faced. So like I said, with some of the legacy data, whether that's coming from the mainframe or even the IBMI, they're not readily readable and consumable within the context of a cloud data warehouse. There's a lot of binary data, uh, things like pack decimal data, zone data. Um, there's in mainframe data, you have things like redefines, uh, some complex record structures, and those really don't work well 
within the cloud ecosystem. So that was challenge number one, making sure that data itself was consumable and readable um, downstream within the cloud. The second challenge was actually making sure that the data delivery was done in a timely fashion, meaning leveraging technologies like change data capture to identify changes as they occur, but also replicate them downstream was the key uh, hurdle that needed to be cleared. Uh, existing integration processes were slow, bound by batch windows and delayed. And then finally, given that these businesses and this customer had a very complex IT infrastructure, bringing in this new um, piece to it, the cloud data warehouse, made the integration architecture potentially much more complex than it was, increasing the challenge of connecting these different systems together. And so this is where Precisely and Snowflake came together to bring some success to the client. What we were able to do was help our customer integrate replicate data from hundreds of uh, ZOS DB2 tables into the Snowflake environment. This data is being replicated as the changes occur on the operational system of record, and they're being delivered into the near real-time reporting layer that the customer is building within Snowflake. This allowed not only better end customer experience because um, this customer is able to now give real-time or m multiple times a day visibility to their clients as to where their shipments were uh, on the delivery chain, but it also gave increased visibility across lines of business um, to the actual data that uh, the organization was generating. So really together, precisely in Snowflake, we'll be able to provide this information in a way that no other kind of two organizations could. And we were able to offer this one plus one equals three solution to our customer. So at a high level, really what where Precisely's role fits in with Snowflake is as follows. You know, we really serve as that bridge between the on-prem legacy world, understanding this complex legacy data, integrating it, transforming it, and delivering it to a variety of different Snowflake environments. So we can support Snowflake, whether it's running on Microsoft Azure, on AWS, or Google Cloud Platform. And really what that does is it makes that data now available for downstream consumption whether uh, Data Mart needs to be built off of it, whether uh, analytics dashboards within a tool like Tableau need to be built. Um, there's a lot of power that uh, organizations can derive from their data through this architecture. So I'd like to show you a quick demo of how Connect and our CDC capabilities work with Snowflake. A couple of highlights I'll, I'll show you here is that we're gonna break down a legacy silo to leverage the scalability, cost effectiveness, and flexibility of Snowflake. So this is going to be data coming from uh, the IBMI. We're gonna take that data, transform the EBCDIC encoded data for use within Snowflake. And this will hopefully give you a good idea of how these valuable assets can be included in your cloud data platform infrastructure. So let's jump into the demo. All right. So here we're looking at the Connect portal. This is our browser-based interface for Connect that allows users to develop, um, deploy, and manage their various data integration product, projects. And really here we're gonna look at uh, monitoring and building out a data replication project from IDMI to Snowflake. So as you can see here on the home page, I've got my dashboard that tells me about the replication that's going on within uh, my organization. I've got one replication project that currently has a satisfaction required, another one that's running along swimmingly. Let's jump into actually configuring this. So as you can see here, I can build out a variety of different data connections. So let's jump into actually configuring some data connections. As you can see here on the left-hand nav bar, we can go into the data connection section and I have a complete list of every single database that I need to connect to. In this case, like I said, I'm going to replicate from IBMI to Snowflake running on AWS. Um, I have a connection defined here, and if we drill down into it, you can see where I've uh, defined my data connection. It's an IBMI connection. We just leveraged JDBC. I'm pointing at my database, um, and then from there, I can save my data connection. Now, the next piece here is my actual Snowflake connection. Uh, if I dive into the details here, you can again see I'm 
connecting to Snowflake via JDBC. I've got my user ID and, and password in place, and I can just test that connection to ensure that I'm able to talk um, to Snowflake. So my test here was successful. I can save that connection and continue moving forward. So in this instance, we're actually going to load to Snowflake on AWS, like I said, but we're going to leverage S3 to parallelize our loadout nicely to maintain performance. Um, so once this is defined, I can now go and build a project. You can see here I've got a project that uh, replicates data from IBMI to Snowflake. So let's dive into it. When you look at this project itself, you can see there's uh, one data flow, as we call it, and all the data flow does is it specifies how data needs to move from source to target. So let's dive into the details of this data flow here, and it's going to open up this uh, edit wizard. So in this wizard, I can now uh, define various characteristics about the data flow. So you know, what database am I pointing to? What kind of replication do I want to do? Uh, what tables do I want to pull over? And then how would I like to apply that into my Snowflake target? So you can see here, I have various options around data replication. I can do a one-time copy of data. I can just replicate changes. I can also do a synchronize. And a synchronize is simply uh, do a one-time copy followed by continuously replicating any new changes that occur after. So from there, uh, you can select uh, tables. In this case, I've selected um, a table from this schema here. You can take a look at the various key columns and specify your specific key columns for performing an update. Um, with that said, all you need to do after that point is to define your target. So here I pointed to Snowflake. I can have the flexibility here to select from a variety of different warehouses. Uh, this is really where Connect is leveraging uh, Snowflake's decoupling of storage and compute. So for extremely high volume transactional tables, you can pick a much bigger Snowflake uh, warehouse to execute that, uh, that apply operation. So I'm just choosing my default here, choosing the database in which my tables will be written to, um, and the schema. Uh, from here, I can optionally create target tables if they don't exist, and then specify an, an apply threshold. So this really gives customers the and users the ability to fine grain control, exert fine grain control over how data is applied. So if your SLAs and data delivery requirements are extremely fast, um, you can specify a very low duration or record threshold. If instead you want to periodically update the data within Snowflake, you have that flexibility as well. So with that, uh, we defined an entire movement including all the data transformation from the IBMI platform into Snowflake. Now from here, all it requires is to go in to uh, monitor your replication. So you can see here, I've got a variety of different projects here. Um, I stopped this project currently. Um, I have another project that's currently running. Um, and by clicking on any one of these, you can start drilling into the details around uh, what those data flows are doing. So in this case, I have a project where I copied data, 35 rows from source to target, um, and then I also had some data replication that I was doing. So again, I purely replicated one record from source to target, and that was 26 bytes. Um, and you can also get more detail into the state of your capture across all the different environments that you're running in. Um, you can also get some clarity into how your tables map from source to target. So you can see here I have a source table staff that then gets mapped into my, my target table uh, within Snowflake. So from there, again, users can just monitor their replication and manage it. Um, this is a quick overview of how you can very simply take a uh, source from your legacy platforms, hook it up to Snowflake, and then continue to replicate that data and monitor it in real time. So with that, I'd like to just pause here and see what questions I can answer for you. Thanks, Ashwin. We have a few that have come in already. What cloud do you support Snowflake on? Good question. So we can support Snowflake running on um, AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Platform. And can mainframe files be integrated to Snowflake? 
Uh, yes. So, it, you know, we do, we definitely have um, an integration with Snowflake to do mainframe file ingestion. So if you have, um, let's say, batch file, uh, sorry, uh, fixed length files, variable length files that you just want to do a batch ingestion of, we can support that. We have some customers doing that today. All right, we'll wait another second to see if there's any more questions that come in. So, Ashwin, I'm not seeing any more questions at the moment. So I would just like to thank you for taking the time to join our discussion today. Um, I'd like to remind everyone this session was recorded. So following this webinar, you'll receive an email with a link to access the recording on demand. You can also find the recording living on the DevOps website. Just visit devops.com slash webinars and be sure to look in the on demand section. So uh, those four $25 Amazon gift cards that we need to give away. Our first winner is Rose H. Our second winner is Maria S. Our third winner is Zinda A. And our fourth and final winner is Eswara P. So to the four of you, congratulations. Keep an eye on your inbox to claim your gift card. And if you don't receive an email, just check your spam folder. Um, Ashwin, again, thank you so much for being here. I would like to thank Precisely for sponsoring today's webinar. And my final thanks goes to you, our audience. Um, thank you so much for being here with us today. I know it was a, a brief webinar, so I appreciate your time. Please just take a brief minute to fill out our post-webinar survey that should pop up on your screen shortly. Um, otherwise, we do hope to see you at a future upcoming TechStrong Learning webinar. Everyone have a great rest of your day.